<laughs> when you exaggerate, you're like, look at me. <laughs> look at me. I, I just it's almost completed like, um, a somersault. Yeah, it's almost Hey, welcome back. Coach Renee here, Coach Tom. And today we are going to be talking about how you should get up from a shoulder roll. There's a few different variations we're going to go over. I think we'll start with the classic. The classic. Look, the, what, what we teach here for the most part, uh, which you're... I'm in right kind now. Of your, I'm kind your of in it. ...sitting position. So when we talk about this uh, classic, I think the reason I say classic is because if you think back to like the Yamakasi and David Bell, this is the type of roll variation or exit of a roll that you would see in those types of videos. Yeah, it's true. I think it's often quite a natural position to come out of as well. So like when we're coaching uh, many students without even instructing them on the exit, this is roughly the position that they often come up with, come up out of, come up into. That's what they're, that they're coming up into this position. Um, and uh, I mean, it's not true for everybody, but it's often very natural position to come up. And as you said already, I'm kind of sitting in this naturally. So it is the classic. We're going with classic. We're going with classic. Okay, so when we're doing the classic, um, what sort of things are we looking for, or what are we trying to achieve with this, with this position? What is the purpose? Why would you want to roll up into this position while you're doing parkour? Yes, yeah, so, well, so as you know, with the shoulder roll, you're tending to go from one shoulder to the opposite hip. So the key thing is actually we're getting ourselves over onto the hip um, to one side. Uh, so the other hip is actually clearly above the ground. So that allows us to create space here and it gives us that weight over top of that other hip. So that's the number one thing that we're looking to get out of this position. Um, outside of that, um, there's some other things that it allows us to do. It allows us to uh, skip some of the bumpy parts on our back, right? So we have these, these hip bones here and we want to avoid rolling directly over top of them. And instead we'd rather come up more to the side so that we avoid the bumpy parts of our hip. What else are we trying to avoid? Is there any other positions or <laughs> body parts that you wouldn't want to roll over as you're trying to get back up to your feet? Um, well, I don't know. What are you, what are you, uh, what are you? <laughs> I don't know if like, set, the, do we talk about the knee, ankle? Yeah, actually, so, uh, so oftentimes when we teach this, we'll, we'll actually encourage putting weight over the knee. And that's more just to like encourage that bias to the side that I was talking about earlier so that we're making sure we're actually going up onto the hip. So initially we'll encourage going up onto the knee. Um, but uh, as we kind of get deeper into this conversation, we might talk about trying to avoid touching the knee. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, so I'm just gonna demonstrate like coming, yeah, going yeah. back, going back and forward with this. So I'm gonna roll back and then posture up, really biasing that, uh, that side here uh, over top of the knee. Um, and that's actually a good drill to practice is just kind of going back and forth, just feeling out how to avoid hitting the bumpy parts. It's very common, people will come up really straight, which uh, that's something that we really want to avoid because if they come up straight, one, your uh, lead foot is gonna block you from standing up. Mm. And then the other part of it is you're exposing those hip bones to the hard floor, the hard, unforgiving environment. And we, uh, and we want to avoid that, right? So, uh, so we're gonna really focus on really biasing that side so that we can get up into the meaty parts of our back and our hip. Um, yeah, so you we're talking about that as a drill. Yeah. And we often talk about using our hands to get mm -hmm. up to, to, our, to our feet. And I think it's something where intuitively in parkour, we're, we're trying to make things better, make things more efficient, make things more aesthetic sometimes. And it gets into a lot of people's heads where I think they, they want to get up without their hands. Mm -hmm. Uh, so we were talking about some of the reasons why you would want to use your hands. What stands out for me is actually I can get up to my feet faster. I can, I can run faster if I get into this position. I can push and get back up to my feet a little bit, a little bit smoother and a little bit faster than if I get into that, that more just that no-handed lunge. 
Uh, and it's something you could try for yourself. You know, try getting up with your hands, try getting up without your hands and see which one is a little bit faster for you. Yeah, um, and actually initially when I'm coaching uh, beginners through the role, I encourage them not to use their hands initially. And the reason for that is because um, it'll expose uh, the position more, right? Mm -hmm. So like if they come up, if they try to come up without their hands, one, actually they might not even physically be able to do it yet. Mm -hmm. So there's a mobility potential uh, uh, problem there that they need to s sort out. Um, but the other thing is uh, it's just, it gets them to, it gets to encourage them to like really lean over to the side here. So like if I try to stand up without my hands and I just try to lean forward, it's much more difficult. Whereas if I really bias that side, doing it without the hands, it kind of, kind of gets you into that pathway. However, using your hands, putting them down, encourages that even more, right? So if I put my hands over to the side, whether it's in front, side, whatever, that's really encouraging me to go to the side. Um, and so now we can talk about potentially trying to avoid this leg. Avoid or use, but before we get into that, do, yeah. you, do you use the, the superhero landing? <laughs> uh, for kids, yeah. sometimes I'll talk about superhero Not for landing. Adults are just big kids. So that's <laughs> true, that's uh, true. So su superhero landing, we're talking about uh, finishing your role sort of like in this position. And that's something I like using for, for kids, but also for the big kids, because uh, they roll up, they get over, they, they're bringing a hand so that they're, we're emphasizing getting over to that one side and then they can kind of finish in a superhero pose or a Isn't cool ninja pose. Isn't that why we're all doing parkour? Is we just want to be superheroes? Yeah, I mean, it's, I'm not a superhero right now, but. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so, you, so using or not using the knee to get up to your feet. Yeah, so, so sort of traditionally, and um, I, I don't have much knowledge of martial arts, but I, I assume oftentimes they, uh, martial art style roles, they'll come up in this position here, mm. um, as opposed to coming up like a parkour person, which is often using your hands because we're very quadrupedal. Just as you do that too, I, f I feel like, again, aesthetically, which is sometimes the goal, I just feel like it looks cooler. It looks cooler to the hands? You yeah. put your hands down. Yeah, totally. I feel like, I feel like you're just trying. <laughs> when, you, when you exaggerate, you're like, look at me. <laughs> look I, at me. I, I, I just it's almost completed like, um, a somersault. Yeah, it's almost like something you would see in, um, I don't know, like, uh, the, like a dance theater thing where like someone does like a uh, a front flip and they roll and they come up with <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> right it's, it's almost of that world whereas um you know the aesthetic we're going for is more like this raw sort of you know pushing the floor away with your hands yeah. thing well i mean it goes back to the original concept of parkour which is it's it's useful and we're using mm -hmm. it for this purpose of continuing movement um we're not trying to pose for the yeah. for the camera <laughs> well sometimes we are <laughs> But that's a whole other conversation we need to have. Anyway, so um, uh, so often, you know, we're dealing with really like hard surfaces, uh, and because we're dealing with hard surfaces, we need to uh, consider that a knee on a hard surface is probably not going to be the most comfortable experience. So we want to try to avoid actually hitting our knee. Um, for many surfaces. I mean, if we're doing it on grass or, you know, softer surfaces. What do you think, of, do you think of like a knee graze? A knee graze, I'm sure yeah. it's fine, you know? Like, this is, this is uh, the exit of a roll, I think, is the one example where using a knee is probably totally okay in parkour. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but if we're putting ourselves at risk of bruising or anything, any kind of knee injury as a result of this, we need to try to, we need to sort out a solution. And, and that solution is often using your hands uh, on one side, and then we also have to protect our, our ankle and our shin, and so we're gonna use our toes as well, right? So, so as we come up, we wanna have our toes kind of pointed towards our knee, so that instead of clacking our ankle on the floor, we're able to posture up onto the toe. And then we'll also use our hands here to support uh, our body weight instead of our knee, right, in place of our knee. So as I roll back, I come up, I have my toe here to initially support, and then also my back hand and then my lead hand here. And that's gonna allow me to avoid touching my knee on the floor, my ankle or my shin, and then I can stand up and run quite quickly out of that position. So um, so we had another variation we were talking about. Yes. Uh, do, you wanna, do you wanna jump into that now? Uh, are we talking pistol? Yeah. 
Yeah, so pistol. kind of the pistol variation, and I, I feel like this is one that we see a lot with freestyle parkour uh, practitioners, uh, parkourists. Parkouristas. The, the, <laughs> the new, the new Say word. Say with an accent, too. <laughs> so a lot of times we'll see this, and I, and I think part of the reason is it's uh, less disorienting, mm -hmm. and it puts them in a straight line for perhaps the next move they're trying to do. So if I get up in this sort of pistol position, if I just say, again, completed a flip, did a roll, land in this pistol position, and now I'm facing on, and both of my feet are actually pointed straight as well, mm -hmm. uh, and I can maybe push off into another, into another move. And I think that's why it's been, been uh, adapted as the roll exit of choice by freestyle athletes, as mm -hmm. opposed to the classic, <laughs> which, <Yeah. laughs> which again, we talk about as uh, the founders of parkour, where we see less flips being connected and things like that, and yeah. more of an emphasis on speed and efficiency. And that could be why that, that was placed. However, I think some people will also make an argument that this might feel faster. Well, what, yeah. what, what, what's your opinion on which, well, first yeah. of all, which one is faster? Which one is faster? Which one is faster, objectively mm -hmm. faster? <laughs> Have we tested guess, this? Yeah, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, so, uh, subjectively. Mm -hmm. So I would say uh, the classic tends to be my role of choice for, for speed. Um, uh, I find that the pistol uh, position tends to put me in a really weird uh, off balance position. Even though the classic is also very tilted, the pistol, I actually find I can't really come up very effectively just like with my foot straight. I have to like right. turn it weirdly to the yeah. side. And I think that's because you're, you're, you're trying to avoid your hip, too, exactly. as well. Like, we were playing around with this earlier, and I was trying to make it fast. Mm -hmm. And I found <laughs> when I was on the spring floor or something soft, and maybe that's where you could use it to be faster, you can come up, you know, straight. Like, mm -hmm. basically, both, both toes pointed, pointed straight forward, and I still make it over my shoulder, so I'm not doing a somersault. Mm -hmm. And I'm still kind of more or less leaning to my hip, but the problem is I tried to do that on the hard floor and immediately like smash my hip bone. Yes. And so if I'm trying to go, if I'm trying to go faster and do it on the hard floor, I do have to kind of turn out a bit. So I make sure I'm on the outside meteor part of my buttocks. Yeah. So, I mean, we, we watched a few videos, right? And there's mm -hmm. like some people who, who come out uh, with the pistol and they are able to do it quite straight. And some people will still tilt over to the mm -hmm. side a bit. Um, and I think, I think uh, it kind of depends on people's like uh, body, right? So some mm -hmm. people's bodies will allow them maybe a little bit more like flexion. They're able to kind of do it without smashing their hips. Some people have both hands down on, the, on either side as they come up. Some people are just biasing that one side with the one hand, almost like a step ball, right? Mm -hmm. And if we were doing this off of a surface, this would be a really effective way of doing a yeah. roll to step vault um, or some kind of dismount. Yeah. Uh, we're not gonna get too that's, much. That's into another that. video. That's another video. Um, <clears throat> but again, yeah, so like uh, I do find that this type of roll puts you a little bit more at risk of hitting your hip bone. Um, however, uh, you know, some people have problems hitting their hip bone using the classic roll too. So I'm not, I'm not convinced that one is necessarily better than the other. Um, for, for some people, I think, mm -hmm. you know, bec there might be a reason some people have developed this as yeah. their technique of choice. I'm also thinking of the scenario too, where like say it's a roof gap. Mm -hmm. And most rooftops are not made of concrete. Yeah. Uh, you know, maybe parking garages and stuff like that. But, you know, if you think of just a rooftop, if you imagine what a rooftop is to you, it's probably actually made of something that has like a little bit of cushion. It's mm -hmm. not the hardest surface in the world. And because if you're doing a gap, your roll is going to be fast. You're going to be right. coming in with like real hot, a lot of momentum. And so you're coming up like this. You may not even need to use your hand. Mm -hmm. You might just be able to roll to your feet. And so, so you, we might see that variation there too as actually the quicker option, although we're talking about like, you know, <laughs> milliseconds here or what, what's, what's, what's shorter than a millisecond? Centiseconds, <laughs> maybe, I don't know. Um, so very, very, very small fractions of time uh, where it might be a little bit faster. But again, if that is that person's role of choice, then they could use it quite effectively there. Whereas if I tried to do that, you know, did a roof gap, I would go to the classic and I would be fast as classic. And I would still use my hands, but it would be such a quick 
touch, right? Like yeah. if you've ever done those sort of roles where they actually happen so fast, um, again, they, they happen so fast. You don't, feel, mm -hmm. <laughs> you don't feel like you're just grazing everything, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so uh, yeah, so like, so do, what's, what's your opinion? Do you think, do you think pistol roles are effective? Do you think they're? I think in the context that uh, I first uh, brought up, which is for if you're linking together tricks, mm -hmm. uh, I can see it being quite challenging coming off to a side and then trying to turn or even more disorienting versus being straightforward. But it also kind of depends on the aesthetic. Again, we're talking about aesthetics here and I think it looks kind of silly when I see someone do a pistol roll and have to put two hands behind their butt mm -hmm. to get up, right? It's just, this is a lot cooler. So if they can get up like this or just roll faster, if you roll faster, I think it'll, it'll work. You won't have to use two hands. You can use that one hand off to the side, get a little, mm -hmm. bit, of, a little bit of style that way. And then we have the- The two-footed. Up to two feet. Up to uh, two. Which probably requires more mobility, but yeah. uh, in the same context, if you're trying to connect uh, flips together or tricks or things like that, if you bring your feet up like this, squeeze into your butt, and then basically come up into a squat, then you might be in a position to jump plyo I don't know if there's anything else you could think of that would be yeah, useful so, for that move. So of course, like the you know you know doing a doing a roll and then coming up onto both feet allows you to jump mm -hmm. right away. Um, but actually, another thing is like if you're rolling on something skinny, this is kind of something that I've kind of delved into a bit, yes. and you're trying to stay on it like mm. some sort of beam kind of mm -hmm. roll. Um, you're not gonna do well with the classic because you're probably gonna come up onto your shin. Mm -hmm. um, Although that's certainly a possible, like possible mm -hmm. to do, um, the pistol is going to be a bit weird too because now your feet are—it's really difficult to aim your feet doing yeah. this. I feel like, and that's the one scenario where if it's it's narrow, uh, like if you're rolling on a wall mm -hmm. or a beam, that that definitely doesn't work because you're you're Correct, sending yeah. yourself off of it. Whereas if you want to stay on it, you can't. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, I think the the coming up onto two feet is more useful for like kind of a narrow roll. Um, because then you can kind of try to stick it or mm -hmm. stay on it uh, with balance and you, control. And it almost um, kind of, you don't actually have to deviate from the classic too much to do that uh, in, in some respects, because we were talking about the classic and being on this part of the foot. So as you, I'm gonna show on this side, but as you roll up this way, I can get onto, so I'm, I'm already planted here. I can right. lift this, this is free. I don't, I don't have to touch it down. I can pivot a bit this way. So. To learn that sort of position, I think if your baseline is like the classic, then you could probably get to that faster than if you're used to practicing the pistol get up. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And I mean, I don't think that coming up onto two feet is a super reliable method for, you know, if you're trying to roll painless mm -hmm. uh, in particular, right? Because if you're coming up onto both feet, you're exposing both of your uh, hips uh, both sides to your hips uh, to the to the ground and um, you know sometimes in parkour you take the hit because it's cool yeah <laughs> is the goal aesthetic or is the goal function yeah and you have to decide for yourself you know what are you trying to display sometimes both <laughs> is probably the best way to go I definitely feel better if uh, something felt good and looked good of course yeah Felt, yeah, feels and looks good. Yeah. Not just like looks good, but you, you can't walk for a week <laughs> uh, or you can't lay down properly. Um, yeah, so I, I mean, ultimately, I think what the takeaway is of all these different positions is that you should put, you know, develop a, at least a base level of competency in all of them, right? If possible, right? If your mm -hmm. body allows it. Um, and the reason for that is because you never know with the scenario that you're presented with in parkour, mm -hmm. which one is going to require mm -hmm. that you, oh, I, yeah. oh, I can't roll my left shoulder? Well, okay, yeah. that's a problem. Well, here's another scenario. Yeah. I recently, I mean, I'm coming out of a pretty significant knee situation, and this is my classic side. Yeah. And this is my classic. Now, I'm, I can roll left shoulder, mm -hmm. but if I'm trying to do like a nice thread roll or something, I'm gonna be, I'm, I'm better off on the right side. So again, it's either learn left shoulder 
mm -hmm. or change up your exit. And I've had to do stuff like this. Yeah. I've had to go from that right shoulder to this sort of exit just to complete a challenge because rolling over this tight knee position, no bueno. No bueno. Yeah, ex I mean, exactly. You, you're forced to adapt and you need to seek out other methods of, of achieving the same ends, right? Um, and that's true for literally everything in parkour, right? Like um, there's no one technique that can be applied to every scenario. So you have to be adaptable, so. Yeah. Anyway, that is uh, it today with uh, our, our roll exits. Uh, we'd like to know what way you get up from a roll. So uh, leave us a comment, let us know how you get up from your roll, why, does it feel good, is it for aesthetics? What are you trying to do when you roll? Awesome. And if you like this video, give us a like, subscribe. If you want more of this type of content, just give us a comment about what you want to hear us talk about next. All right. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time.